Hi guys, it's Andy from Man City Fan TV. Well, this is just a quick roundup. It's uh, it's just my thoughts on the game. I was away yesterday and uh, didn't even get back to see the game last night. So uh, I've just uh, had a problem with the broadband. That broadband went down and uh, I've only just managed to uh, get a 4G router this morning. So I was able to watch uh, the game back again and give my thoughts that's why i couldn't go on the skype call with ray earlier i hadn't seen the game i didn't think it was fair for me to to comment on something he hadn't seen uh but yeah it's uh it's one of those uh that typical city performance uh on occasions this season where things of levels have dropped and i don't know what it was last night i think it probably started i mean for me personally when I watched uh, Pep's presser um, and his pre-match sort of uh, conference was very negative and he, he looked down and depressed and angry and you know the way that he was interacting with the media uh, was very frosty and yeah it wasn't like his normal ones I know he can be a little bit sort of you know off puttish but uh, he just seemed very very I don't know frosty uh, with them so that gave me concerns originally when I watched it, thinking, is there something wrong here? Has something happened at the ground or the stadium or in training or with the club? Or is it transfer dealings? Is it not? I'm not too sure. And then on to the game uh, last night, uh, which I just watched back uh, earlier. Uh, yeah, it was uh, got a great start, wonderful start uh, immediately. Uh, with the, the goal from Sergio Aguero and then you're looking at it and you're thinking 24 seconds in brilliant goal, nice little ball from Raheem, uh, I don't know whether David slipped or he meant to do what he did but he got it back to uh, Sergio when he was in the right spot like he always is and, uh, and put it in but then all of a sudden you're thinking oh, come on, you know 20 minutes in, 30 minutes in and you're waiting and waiting and waiting and uh yeah, it just became very sluggish and very slow. And Pep didn't seem to, I don't know, he, he just sort of, apart from one or two outbursts on the sideline, he sort of sat there and it was like he'd almost given up or he'd almost just thought, I'll get him in half time and I'll give him a rollicking and everything will be fine. It was a really weird, strange one. Uh, but then uh, the thing I want to talk about in particular, which I... Um, I sent a message to a few journalists seeing whether they'd give us a soundbite or not on it because a couple of uh, journalists that I read on Twitter last night was talking about the uh, Paul Tierney incident with Kevin De Bruyne which I found absolutely bizarre and uh, he had lots of replies back basically saying well on replays he shown his whistle to Kevin De Bruyne and told him to wait and blah de blah de blah well, hold on a minute. My question back to Henry Winter, it was this morning, who, who he did turn around and say it was absolutely ridiculous uh, and, and you know he couldn't understand why Kevin De Bruyne was booked. My question to Henry Winter was, one, why is Paul Turney, after a quite bad tackle from behind by Richie on Raheem Sterling, why is Paul Turney suddenly stopping the game? One, he didn't mark out with his stupid sort of like, you know, foam marker. He didn't mark out anything be uh, beyond the ball. He then never paced out 10 yards for, for a wall that was non-existent and put his stupid marker on the floor. Uh, the, it was, the free kick was like 40, 45 yards away. Why does Kevin De Bruyne have to stop and play to a whistle? Uh, the free kick, if that free kick was at the halfway line, would he do the same thing and say, wait until I'm in a perfect position to see whatever comes up next? No, he should be allowed to take the free kick immediately uh, because it, the advantage is given to us because of the tackle uh, from Richie. But no, he, he, he goes into this really strange, bizarre, and it has been mentioned by many journals and ex-referees as bizarre, where he's telling Kevin De Bruyne to wait for a whistle. It's just, I, I find it absolutely incredible that referees these days are making such incompetent and ridiculous decisions in games. All right, fair, fair 
play, you could turn around and say he's told Kevin De Bruyne to wait for the whistle uh, from the videos. Now, whether Kevin De Bruyne was one looking at the referee when he said that and two actually listening to the referee who was about five, six yards away when he said it, if you look at the images on TV, uh, he's probably thinking, where where am I going to put this ball? What can I do next? Etc. He's not listening to a referee uh, with a free kick 40, 45 yards away from goal. Uh, it's just, I find it absolutely bizarre. It'd be interesting to see uh, if any of the likes of PGMO, L, Mike Dean uh, comes back and says anything about it. I did tweet him uh, about 30 minutes ago. Um, not heard anything back. I did uh, send a message to Jonathan Northcroft as well, just prior to making this video, to see whether he had any sound bites or comments on it. The only person really that I've seen sort of stand up and come out is Henry Winter, uh, who uh, basically said it was pathetic. And yeah, I totally agree. It was one thing the referee sort of not being happy that KDB took a wonderful, absolutely wonderful free kick and we scored from it. But then to go and book him uh, is another thing. Because why not just turn around and say, look, I, t I said to you, we're, you're retaking it again, that's it. Fair enough, fair play, uh, whatever. But then to book Kevin De Bruyne for it, I, th I find just childish uh, and just, you know, it's the focus, the attention on me time with Paul Tierney. But what that did is, is it exacerbated the problem later on in the game, whereby KDB went into a tackle, a genuine tackle, and obviously you're going to have the crowd screaming and shouting, which they did. Uh, the players, the Newcastle players up in arms, trying to make out that it was a, a really nasty tackle. and In fact, it was a decent tackle and nothing to it. But... What that did do then was force Kevin De Bruyne off the field because Pep's turned around and thought, I can't lose him for a game if he gets a second yellow card uh, and we lose our best midfielder. Um, so <clears throat> I find it, I do find it absolutely bizarre and I'd love referees to come out and try and explain their thinking behind the fact of they want to you know, wait for a whistle. Uh, they don't anywhere else on the pitch. They don't do it when it's a free kick in, in a penalty box for the defending team. They don't do it when it's in the you know halfway circle. But the, he chose on that particular night, last night, to somehow try to wait. You know, wait for me, wait for me, so I could get in some sort of position. That the advantage is with the attacking team, and it should just be you know it's your ball, get on with it, and uh, you know. If I'm not in the right position, that's not my problem. Why is Paul Tierney coming across to Kevin De Bruyne in the first place anyway? He puts the ball down. He's not going to, like most free kicks, doesn't put it in the exact position. So what's he waiting for? Why is he making Kevin De Bruyne wait for it? Uh, I just find it absolutely pathetic. Uh, but the result, yeah, nothing we can do about the result. Uh, City were poor all over the pitch. Uh, every single, to a man, were garbage last night and we got what we deserved. It's one of those, but we move on. Uh, we've got uh, Arsenal on Sunday. Uh, the only other bit of news is uh, Robbie Matondo has signed his contract uh, and by all accounts, uh, reading it now, uh, it looks like it's going to be uh, £9.6 million pounds up front with uh, it, the deal rising to £11.3 million. City also included a 10% sell-on clause in addition to a buyback clause. But anyway, that's the latest news from Andy at Man City Fan TV. Don't forget to subscribe, click notification. We'll see you soon.